Hi, I'm Alexandra Tinsman, president of the NEM Foundation. I'm here on behalf of the Catapult Migration Committee to explain the new proposal from the Catapult Migration Team and the Tokenomics Team. Now first, please keep in mind it's not yet confirmed. So before any of this can be implemented, it needs to pass a POI vote. So we wanna make sure that everyone understands this. So let's start with the biggest questions first. How many Catapult tokens will you get for your ZEM. Catapult tokens will be allocated on a one-to-one -one basis with ZEM. And when you get your new Catapult tokens, the current NEM blockchain, also known as NIS1, won't be affected. So for example, if you have 100 ZEM, after allocation, you're gonna have both 100 ZEM and 100 Catapult tokens. If you have accounts on the NEM blockchain, how are you gonna get the new Catapult tokens? The team is gonna announce a date for a snapshot on the NEM public chain at a specific block height several weeks before the Catapult launch. Catapult token allocations will be based on this snapshot. So if you have 100 ZEM in your account at the snapshot, it doesn't matter if your ZEM balance changes later, you're still gonna have 100 Catapult tokens. Everyone will manually claim their Catapult tokens on the chain, which means this is an opt-in system. And we're planning to release a tool for everyone to claim their token, so you're not even going to have to touch the code. Once the snapshot happens, you can claim your Catapult tokens before or after the new chain launches. If you wait until after, you have six years to claim them, and your tokens are going to be put in a custodial account until you claim them. Your Catapult account will use the same private key as your NEM account. So once you've claimed your tokens, you just need to connect your Catapult account to a wallet and they're gonna be there. Now, what about migrating other data to the new chain? Root namespaces will be migrated, but Mosaics won't. To bring Mosaics to Catapult, the namespace owner is gonna to have to opt in for the root namespace first. That namespace owner can then create and distribute the mosaics based on the NEM chain snapshot. This decision was made for technical reasons. Multi-signature accounts and account configurations will be migrated. The multi-signature account itself will be manually opted in and each signer will also accept to be opted into the multi-sig account. What are the new inflation and block reward systems? Inflation is a new Catapult feature. So on the Catapult public chain, we're using it to substantially increase harvesting rewards. This should increase long-term sustainability and make harvesting a lot better for investors. The new tokenomics approach is designed to have rewards somewhere around 6% per year for nodes and 3% for delegated harvesters in the early years. And that is a big improvement, both in the size of reward and accessibility by the wider community. And Catapult pays these rewards automatically on chain with the feature, it's built right into the protocol. So where are these inflationary block rewards coming from and how do they work? NEM currently has a maximum supply of almost 9 billion ZEM. And of those 9 billion tokens, they were created and distributed when NEM first launched. Catapult will also have the same maximum supply of almost 9 billion, but they won't all be created at launch. Instead, developer reserves will be reduced by 1.2 billion, and then the Catapult chain will launch with 7.8 billion tokens in existence. Then 1.2 billion new tokens will be created and released into circulation as block rewards to harvesters over many years until that 9 billion max supply is reached. The rate of new tokens created will be the same as Bitcoin, and Catapult harvesting will follow the Bitcoin rate of release over 120 years. However, there's one key difference. Catapult will adjust the block reward rate every quarter instead of once every four years to give a smoother distribution and avoid the four years having seen in Bitcoin. Matching Bitcoin keeps it simpler for investors because the whole industry is familiar with Bitcoin's inflation. And the smoother curve means that harvesting catapult will probably pay a better rate than Bitcoin for the first couple of years, depending on the number of harvesters. We think that can be a pretty interesting concept for investors. Now this chart shows the percentage of maximum supply that's mined each quarter for Bitcoin compared to catapult. 
Bitcoin has big drops where rewards are cut in half and Catapult has a gradual change, but they add up to be equal. Okay, next question. How will node operators be rewarded? Rewards from each block include tokens from inflation and the transaction fees for all transactions and a block. The node owner receives 100% of the rewards and fees relating to their account balance and reputation, plus 25% of the rewards generated by delegated harvester balances on that node. The 25% is effectively a bonus for the node owner for running the node that allows the delegated harvester to harvest. The delegated harvester account therefore receives 75% of the rewards and fees from blocks harvested by their account. This chart shows an estimated breakdown of a node operator's rewards for the first 10 years. Now you can see the red portion, which is the block rewards, makes up the biggest percentage of rewards. The green portion is the fees from the delegated harvesters, and those could be higher or lower, really depending on how many delegated harvesters that you have. In the long term, the idea is that the transaction fees will provide most rewards, just like the Bitcoin model. So what's happening with the NEM Supernode program on Catapult? The Catapult block rewards will be a lot higher for node operators. So it's possible that other rewards aren't needed. But as a thank you to the NEM Supernode owners, the teams allocated about 33 million tokens from the current Supernode program to be given to high performance Catapult nodes over six years. Now remember, block rewards will be fully decentralized, but this node bonus program will be centrally managed by one of the NEM entities similar to the NEM Supernode program. But keep in mind, these centralized rewards, they're much lower than before. For. And there's one more change. NEM Supernode operators needed 3 million ZEM to get rewards from the node program. With Catapult, there's three tiers. A Catapult node can now earn these bonuses with a balance of 1 million tokens. Higher bonuses are earned at 2 million and a balance of 3 million tokens earns the highest bonus. Now remember, these funds are being taken from the current existing Supernode rewards, so there's no extra funding or supply inflation needed. So what are the other bonuses and the proposal? Well, there's two smaller bonus programs that will operate for a limited time. The first bonus takes 1.9 million catapult from core team funds for nodes that register before launch and stay up for the entire first year. The second takes another 3.1 million Catapult tokens from the core team for those who keep a node running on both Catapult and the NEM chain. All right, that covers it. So you can take a look in the comments section for links to the detailed documents. Please leave your comments or visit the NEM forums or the Telegram channels and look for announcements about voting and the snapshot dates. Before I go, I wanna say that Catapult can't move forward unless it passes a vote. And the teams feel that this is a solid proposal. So I hope you participate in the upcoming vote. And that wraps it up. So until next time, thank you for all of your support.